good morning morning okay so today our topic is career planning interesting topic isn't it because during our work lives maybe 30 years 35 years 40 years maybe we all aspire when we start our career to progress in our career and today's topic will tell you that to progress in your career all right you can't just leave it to fate and destiny there has to be some amount of planning which has to get into the process to see that your career at the end of it you consider as having been fulfilled. So, to that extent to the individual that is each one of us you and me career planning is indeed a very important topic for the human resource manager and therein we have a responsibility as managers within companies to not only manage our own career, but also to try and plan the careers of people within the organization in general and in particular people within our own department, people who report to us directly. Okay. So, we start with the question, it is a provocative question and that is whose responsibility is career planning, all right. Is it really the responsibility of the organization? Yes. What do you think? Whose responsibility is it to plan your career? Is it organization's responsibility or yours? Well, in the past many companies assumed this responsibility, assume the responsibility for developing and planning career paths and growth opportunities for their employees. The company determined to what position and at what speed people within their organization would advance. So, you see it was very much accepted by the employer and the organization that career planning for their own employees would be part and parcel of their own responsibility. However, this approach cannot work nowadays. This works reasonably well in the corporate climate that we had at that time. Now, what do we mean by corporate climate? Well, yes, environment, all right. So, the corporate environment which prevailed then and what was that environment? We have heard of lifetime employment, have you heard of that? Many organizations including many good companies, they are the organization more or less guaranteed that once you join the organization and perform reasonably well, you would be in a position to stay there, grow there and retire at the end of your career in the same organization. That was the kind of climate and why was this climate there? Yes, because the rate and pace of growth in industry and business, the type of organizations and the type of business environment that we saw was what? Was relatively relatively stable. So, organization climate when let us say yester years was relatively stable and relatively certain. What do I mean by that? relatively certain that means predictable predictable you see organizations and managers within organizations could with a reasonable level of certainty plan make strategic plans make annual plans okay budget for their business 
budget for that cost and all within reasonably predictable all right situation and scenario but what has happened today so this is yester year and what has happened today yes yes yeah today we have entered an area of all right shall we say business and we have entered a time in the business uh, continuum where everywhere we see uncertainty and why do we see the uncertainty because change hasn't there been a change enormous change and much of it technological driven is it not the it industry is fast changing in fact it has changed already considerably the nature of business the opportunities which are there the types of businesses that are with us now and the type of businesses that will come in in the future bringing with them opportunities as well as the threats these are unknown we have entered into a dark uncharted sea no maps so therefore predictability is now not there and therefore what is happening corporate disruptions of the last decade disruptions plans are not working out people are continue to do business in the same way or trying to do that in the absence of anything better making the same types of plans but the paradigm has changed so the plans don't work there are disruptions and this approach of employee career development is therefore now rendered largely workable or largely non workable non workable any questions okay so remember the key words yesterday if i say so you had got relative stability relative certainty in the business scenario and therefore you could reasonably plan into what would happen in at least let's say the 5 years today that is gone so the very underpinning of your planning process has been swept away and therefore as in many other areas of business even in the area of planning the careers of your employees you have to try certain new approaches so acquisitions divestitures rapid growth and downsizing have left many companies unable to deliver on the implicit career promises made to employees now what are these implicit promises when we take employees even when we took them you know in the yester years it's in your sense did we make a promise that we will plan your career no we didn't so that was no explicit promise it was not part of the employment contract but at the same time did not an employee joining a good company highly reputed company as we call it did they not have expectations and the expectations were implicit it was unstated maybe but it was very much there it was a powerful force and that expectation was now that i have got entry into a good company if i work hard i don't have to worry about changing this job and i don't have to worry about my career growth everything is secure now i can concentrate my efforts on my work and not worry about my own career and planning okay that is implicit and that implicit all right promise was there whether we stated it explicitly or not and so what has happened you as managers and we as managers sitting in organizations of today and those which will be there in the future we have we are embarrassed are we not in a sense what is the downsizing we talked about downsizing it's a euphemism it's a nice word to say that you are asking people to go away people who have joined you with the implicit expectation of spending their lifetime working lifetime within your company you are asking them to go away that is downsizing is embarrassing 
In fact, it is downright painful, the painful position of having to renege career mobility opportunities. Renege means what? Renege is to go back on your word, that implicit promise. We as managers to the employee, the company is who? What is the face of the company? The manager, the management of the company, the people who form the management. And they are in the painful position of reneging on career mobility opportunity. That means, where the career would have led the employee. But today, we cannot really guarantee that. And our employees had come to expect it. In some cases, employees who expect career growth cannot even be guaranteed the very jobs. That is what downsizing and right sizing is all about. Can't guarantee the job. I mean, where is the question of trying to make career plans for them? Uh, stay in the company that implicitly implies that they are there for a long innings and you cannot guarantee that. So, if that approach is not going to work, we as HR managers, what other approaches can we explore? And the new approach to career planning, all right, may have to do with, you know, that although the primary and final responsibility of career development rests with each employee of the company, all right, we have to somehow tune their minds and their expectations to this principle. Because in the past, there was kind of a dependency, there was a kind of expectation that the career planning, the career path would be looked after by the employer. So, although the primary and final responsibility of career development rests with each employee, the company has complementary responsibilities. So, two things we have to do. A, let it be known in whatever we feel is the best way in our organizations to each employee that look here, you are in our company, this is a good company. But remember, the primary responsibility of your growth and development and fulfillment of your career aspirations depends on you primarily. But we do have a complementary role, right? And we will fulfill that. But the lead, the initiative has to be taken by you. This approach is a new approach, and this has to be taken. The company is responsible for what then? For communicating to the employees where it wants to go and how it plans to get there, which means what? It means the corporate strategy. So, the employee must understand that the responsibility primarily for his or her career growth is his or hers. But at the same time, the company says that we will help you by telling you about the company, because we as management, we know what are the company's plans how the company is performing, to what extent the market is changing and our plans would succeed or not succeed. All such matters, we will tell you, because we, they will have a great bearing on what you plan for your own career. Okay? Right. So, that is the new approach to career planning. One important contribution a company can make to each employee's career development is to provide him or her with honest performance feedback. So, we said a little while ago that responsibility for the new approach new approach so employers responsibility
employer responsibility, we said first strategic plans. business plans, business performance, so this is focusing on the company and second is feedback of the employees performance. So, this is employee focus. So, honest performance feedback about current job performance and having received that from the employer, the employees in turn are responsible for knowing what their skills and capabilities are and what assistance they would need from their employer to improve that, to develop on that, so that they can perform better and come up to the expectations and grow. And thereafter, the employees therefore, are responsible to ask for that assistance and prepare themselves to assume new responsibilities. So, the new approach to career management by companies can be summed up as assign employees the responsibility explain to them of managing their own careers and then provide the support they need to do it. Any questions at this stage? Okay. So, I can see that many of you are thinking that one more responsibility is added to us to manage our own careers, even if we join a very good company at the start of our career. We are very happy if on a campus interview, uh, we just get our MBA degree and we get a very good job, but our worry for our career does not end there, Maybe it starts there. Okay. So, as HR managers, you have to give support to the employees, feedback and assistance for them to improve and plan their careers. So, support mechanisms for career planning. The word career, remember, can be viewed from a number of different perspectives. A career is a sequence of positions occupied by a person during the course of a work life. Fine. Now, the perspective which is being talked about here is there is an objective career, this is an objective career. From another perspective, a career consists of a sense of where one is going in one's work life. This is called the subjective career. So, there are two objective career and subjective career, these are two perspectives. And this is held together by the self concept of what comprises of perceived talents and abilities, your own self conception, basic values, what are each individual's basic values, career motives and career needs. You see, this is where the second perspective is very important for you and her, the values may be different the self concept of what makes you happy in a career may be different. So, motives may be different and your basic values will dictate what would be your motives and what would be your shall we say coefficient of satisfaction or the satisfaction index, when at the end of the career you take stock and say well I have had this 30 years, 35 years career, was I successful? each one of you will measure that success in different terms with different yardsticks. So, this is what is known as the subjective perspective. So, both these perspectives objective and subjective 
focus on the individual. We come back to the individual being responsible for career planning. And the framework in which we plan is a yardstick that we set up, the reference point, the checkpoint that we set up all right, for ourselves. And they are different from those of other people. So, both these perspective, objective and subjective, focus on the individual. Both assume that people have some degree of control over their destinies. Think about that. This is an implicit assumption that each one has some degree of control over their destinies and can manage opportunities in order to maximize success and satisfaction which they derive from their career. Okay. And as you know, we studied this in human behavior class that there are different types of personality. Some people have what we call internal locus of control, remember? And what is that? What typifies that for a personality? That they are in control of their own lives and their destiny. And the other way around, some people have an external locus of control. And to them, they have very little control over their lives and hence their careers. So, these come back to the individual, subjective focus on the individual. Okay, any questions? There is another assumption. The assumption is that HR activities should recognize stages. The career has certain stages and the HR activities should not only recognize, but assist the development tasks they face at every stage. They means the employees face at every stage in the career. Career planning is important because consequence of career success or failure are linked closely to each individual's self concept, which we just discussed about, that is perceived talents and abilities, basic values, career motives and needs, right, and identify and satisfaction with career life. So, career planning is important because of the consequence of career success or failure are linked closely to each individual's right, self concept, identity and satisfaction with career life. Any questions? Okay. So, having said that, let us see, do we sit back and wait for some of our career careers to be planned? As it comes, we play it by the year. No, we say proactive career planning. So, a career cannot be left to chance. Instead, in the evolving world of work, it should be shaped and managed more by the individual than by the organization. So, imagine an analogy you have a potter sitting at his wheel, and there is a clay which is the career and the potter's wheel is turning and the potter with his skilled hand is shaping right and molding and managing all right to make that object or the article which is there on the wheel can you visualize that a potter's wheel making a bowl or a surai all right so it is the potter it is you you have to be proactive and manage and shape the career. Traditionally, careers tended to evolve through one or two firms and to progress in linear stages. As one moved upward through the hierarchy of positions in an organization. Now, what is this saying? That traditional approach all right, to planning was traditional approach. was one or two firms, say you spend in firm A, the 
the first 10 years. Then you go to firm B because you get opportunity, better pay, better position and maybe you spend 30 years or 25 years, right? And at the end of 35 or 40 years, you retire. And what else? So number of jobs, few. And the growth is linear. Linear as distinct from non-linear, maybe a non-linear growth is something which is like this or maybe a growth. So, this is time and this is let us say promotion and pay. This is what we are saying as growth, which means responsibility, because these two are tied up to responsibility. So, maybe you could see a career like this, these are non-linear, all these are non-linear. So, what is the concept that they are trying to say here? They are bringing out the same concept that traditional careers have come to an end. You cannot think of them anymore. Why? Because this one or two firms concept has gone. Why has it gone? Downsizing, right sizing, mergers, acquisitions, the company that you join today may not exist there tomorrow. So, where is the question of your change, not changing jobs? So, there are a host of reasons arising out of the unstable environment that makes this all right, an anachronism. One or two terms, forget about it. Maybe in a career of 35 years, there may be 7 or 8 or 10 firms that you have to join. Nimbly go from one firm to the other and progress is not linear therefore. It may so happen and you have to be prepared for it that you have come up to this point and then suddenly all right, there is a downsizing and you are part of that and then what happens thereafter this is where you may get the next job. So, be prepared for dips. Again, there is an opportunity which comes from here because you have got this as a parking job get an opportunity and you go there. That means, had you been in the same path, you would have been here. So, you have made this gain. So, there are downsides, there are the ups and there are the downs. Here, you went down in your career objective. If you follow this traditional path, you would have been here, instead you are here. Here you gained from traditional. You see, you came up here. So, there are ups and there are downs and when you, when you think about it now, you see, it is very, very apparent that it takes a lot of planning for you, proactive planning to be first prepared for these ups and downs and then to equip yourself with skills, all right, knowledge, okay. but first your attitude, you have to change that attitude and accept that the conditions have changed. Otherwise, you will be bemoaning your fate and getting depressed. So, acceptance that things have changed is the first requirement. So, hierarchy of positions in an organization, but today as we have just explained, given the disruptions caused by the downsizing, restructuring, technological advancement and global competition, careers span multiple organizations. So, first tenet number one, 
that we have to accept is don't expect your career to be only in one or two organizations. Accept the fact it will be multi organization. What does that mean for you? Every organization that you join, new organization, yes, brings with its, its own challenges for you. You go into another environment, don't you? You go into another culture in the new organization. You face new challenges, do you not? Because in your old organization, you had established your credentials, so to say, and your credibility as a good performer, a fine manager. But when you join another organization, isn't there an uncertainty? Because there is a fresh challenge with a new set of people, new bosses and in the new job, within the new culture, once again you have to establish your credentials, is it not? So, there is a tension for you and when you go for multiple organizations, which will happen during your career, you have this tension compounded and how you deal with this tension? All right, gives you success or failure in your career. If you deal with it in such a manner that it becomes a constructive tension, whereby you perform better, then you can convert a so-called threat into an opportunity and progress better in your career. Then you would have, if you continued in the traditional career path with one company or two companies, all right where after some time you have the complacency syndrome setting in. You have a steady career progress, maybe you have a halo effect, you are a good performer, no one challenges that, now all that has gone. Okay. So, multiple organizations are non-linear as we have discussed. Any questions at this stage? Okay. So, it says here they are boundary less and tend to be characterized by features such as the following. What are we talking about here? Organizations, business environment of today and into the future. Boundary less, portable knowledge and skills and abilities across multiple firms. What is this portable knowledge? Portable. Well, portable is something you can easily carry away, is it not? Pack it up, carry it away like your briefcase and portable knowledge, skills and abilities. That means, you have to have today multiple skills, all right, which are not connected and rooted to one organization. That means, there is special machinery which only this organization has, others do not have it. You are an expert in this special machine operation. That is not good enough. You have to have an expertise in machine operation, so that you can carry away in your briefcase the knowledge if you leave this organization, that if this is a special machine and these are the principles of operation, these principles are my portable knowledge. I take these away, go to another company where they have another special purpose machine, use these same principles and work that machine well. So, this is just an analogy, conceptual. That is the kind of knowledge which you have to develop today. That is the kind of skill you have to develop. Let us name one skill which you can call a portable skill. Name one. Yes, that is right. Computer knowledge, computer knowledge, working with a computer environment, working on a computer platform, knowledge of that, is not it portable? Because all firms, all companies that you go into, you will have computers. And if you have the basic knowledge of computer operations, computer software, computer database, you will be able to use that knowledge across multiple organizations. So, that is the kind of boundary less. You go seamlessly from company to company without the travails and tribulations of trying to learn the job again and again and again. So, personal identification with meaningful work. So, you have to then identify for yourself 
certain areas, maybe niche of work, which you think you are an expert and which you can carry away from organization to organization. Remember, when we join organizations, all right, usually, say at first level, we join as trainees. What does that mean? That means we have a general education, we have a professional degree, let us say, but we are taken as trainees. Why? Because to induct and train you into the special knowledge and special skills which that organization has. And if you learn that and you are complacent and you forget other portable knowledge and skills, then you are going to pay a heavy price in your career. Because now, you not only have to have those knowledge and skills for which that organization which you have joined trained you, but you also have to develop other skills which are portable okay? and personal identification with work. That is, what are those knowledge and skills which you as a person would like to develop and take away with you in your briefcase, portable. Next, on the job action learning, on the job action learning. So, the thought here is, as you are working, do not routinize your work. Every time you are working, ask questions. We have done this work or I have done it in this manner this year. Is there any better way to do it? So, on the job action learning is to do with innovation being brought into the job. Today, it is an important issue. Innovation is not the responsibility of someone else in some department of the company. To manage your own career, innovative thinking innovative processes which are hidden and locked within your own mind. You have to release these processes on your job and the formula is try and do your job differently, so that it yields better results each year that you are doing the same job, if you are in the same job. Development and multiple networks of associates and peer learning relationships, what does that mean? Yeah, networking. Maybe if you are a software engineer, you have to network within your special expertise areas, that is other software engineers. Peer learning relationships, other software engineers are working in different companies, so you network with people doing similar job. What are the computer platform they are working in? Your other colleagues who are also software engineers. What are the kind of applications they are dealing with? What are the kind of problems they are facing? So, development of multiple network of associates and peer learning relationships. And then, responsibility for managing one's own career. We come back to it again. You have to internalize that concept that I am now responsible for managing my own career. Any questions? Okay. So, what is career success? We said a little while ago that each individual has to more or less define what he or she thinks all right, is considered by he or she as a career success, because there is not just one prototype which fits everyone's idea of a career success. Now, you see here, the old concept of organization man of the 1950s and 60s had a clear definition of success and a stable model for achieving it. We have discussed this before. Today's turbulent business world has forced employees to explore alternative models of career success. Clear. Questions such as, is career success occupational? Is it job satisfaction? Is it growth and development of skills? Yeah. These are the kind of questions which we have to ask. What is it? What is that framework? which you will define as success. 
is a successful movement through various life stages. Yeah. What is it? So, traditionally career development and success were defined in terms of occupational advancement. You join as an assistant engineer, let us say, and then you are promoted after two or three years into engineer and then after three or four years into engineering executive and then into a manager okay, and so on. So, it is occupational, which is clear and easy to measure. Today, however, it seems appropriate to consider a new model. As more careers tend to be cyclical in nature, now here is a new concept being introduced. Careers are not non-linear and uh, are not linear, they are non-linear, we have said that before. There can be breaks in the career, there can be gains and there can be losses, ups and downs. But here is another concept that it is cyclical in nature, this is another new model. That is, they involve periodic cycles of skill, apprenticeship, mastery and reskilling. What does that mean? It means your learning process does not end. You are talking here of periodic cycles. So, so this is time and this is career path, right. So, let us say you start here and then you have a cycle. At this spot, your career changes. What are we trying to portray here? You have a career here, all right, and you come up to 20 years. You start at age 22, and at the age 42, you find that you are more or less got skills and knowledge, etc., in an area where the business has disappeared. Let us say you started all right, as a drilling engineer all right, of oil fields etcetera and let us take a hypothetical example. You find that energy which is all right, solar energy has taken over in the next 20 years of your career. No one uses oil anymore because it pollutes the environment huh? and you cannot renew it you deplete that source of energy, solar energy technology has advanced, it is cheaper, it is cleaner and then what happens? You as a drilling oil field engineer, what happens to your career? All right, at half cycle, your career is finished. So, what have you to do then? You have still got 15 years of your career left or 20 years, maybe you have to learn new skills, new knowledge. Can you do it immediately? No. Maybe the way you are drilling, all right, in your last industry, maybe certain portable skills that you had acquired could be applied into another industry and then you begin another cycle. So, what are we saying here? Periodic cycles of skill, apprenticeship, mastery, and reskilling. You have acquired some skills, but again when you join the new 
you have to, you are not a master, you have to learn again and then after a certain time you have another situation. Let us say after another 10 years, so now you have 30 years and now you retire. Does it mean your career has stopped? Because you are only 52 years old. No. Maybe the portable skills you have acquired now, both in this industry where you operate as well as the next industry, 20 years here, 10 years, you have picked up skills and knowledge, all right, which are portable and which can be, let us say, imparted in to new people who are coming up, you know, in educational institutions, students. So, then you can start another career here as an instructor. So, this career is instructor. And maybe you go 10 years here till you are 62 and then you decide that you will manage your own business portfolio and you are not going to work for anyone else, you are going to be self-employed. Now, the concept here is instead of having a career which is in one skill, this is a career you have to build on portable skills. Instead of having a career which is linear or which is non-linear, we have cyclical nature of careers. That means, you can migrate from one career to another career. You can migrate from a university, let us say, into industry, from industry back to university which was not there in the past. Why? Because there was no earthly reason for you to do it. Now, there will be powerful reasons and the career pattern which is being predicted now will be one for knowledge workers basically, cerebral driven work. The second will be for people who have portable knowledge and skills which they can carry easily, seamlessly across organizational boundaries, all right. In a certain domain, they have that knowledge, organizational boundaries, so that they can think of having cyclical careers instead of one linear career. Is that concept acceptable to you or one wants, someone wants to debate that? Look at my own case. I had a long career in two companies just two companies, but at the end of it, I went into the academic line, where again, there is a kind of apprenticeship, there are new skills, which you have to learn, all right. And whatever you have experienced and carried away, all right, portable knowledge from the previous career in industry, it can be applied in the same domain. So, if you are in business, in business teaching. So, to an extent then, it is a cyclical career. And then, maybe from this, another cyclical career would be in consulting, where the same knowledge which you carry, portable knowledge, across industries, okay, boundaryless, to academia, from academia again across multiple industries as a consultant, instead of one or two industries where you gain this knowledge. So, is that example clear? This is the kind of cyclical careers that you have to plan. You have to acquire those portable knowledge and skills, all right. And in the process, whichever employer that you are working with will help you to do that. Right. Carrying away portable knowledge and skills, all right, seamlessly across organizational boundaries, that means boundaryless, 
laterally rather than upward movement. When I showed you this cycle, you see more or less, more or less it is lateral, it is not going up, it is not going up, it is more or less lateral. Often constitutes career development lateral and cross national experience is essential to multi skilling and continued employability. Now, why cross national? Because the world has become a global village, right? Globalization. Late careers increasingly are defined in terms of phased retirement. As I gave you the example, that in, in, in case from teacher you can become consultant, right? From consultant, you can go and become developers of children, you know. That means, you no longer teach in a high level institution. You can carry that knowledge which you have gained into simple language, all right, and teach in school. So, phase retirement. In this new world model, the ultimate goal is psychological success. Very important. Please internalize this concept. That is the feeling of pride and personal accomplishment that comes from achieving one's most important goals in life, be it family happiness, inner peace or something else. Okay? Right. So, we will take a break and continue this topic, all right, after little while. Thank you.